Hi, welcome everyone for webinar. <clears throat> Today we will be talking about Winchill to ERP integration. My name is Radhika Bhagat. Uh, I'll just give a couple of minutes to see if anyone uh, to see uh, if anyone else still keeps joining. Meanwhile, I will be starting a poll right now before I start with my presentation, uh, just to make sure that everyone is able to hear me properly. Going to uh, launch it now. Just let me know. Okay, so let's start. Um, <clears throat> welcome everyone for Wednesday webinar. Today's topic is Winchill to ERP integration. My name is Radhika Bhagat. Um, so these are uh, these are our objective today. We will be starting with an introduction, and later on we will be uh, looking at uh, what is digital thread, a brief introduction, a brief overview of it, and then we will be diving diving into our actual topic today, which is uh, Winchill to ERP integration. Um, after discussing about uh, this topic, we will also be having a uh, demonstration from the system and then we can take up your questions uh, in the end. My name is Radhika Bhagat. I am eight plus years of experience on PTC product. Um, I started as a Winchill um, developer, uh, worked mostly in customization and uh, since April 2022, I've joined PDS Vision and uh, we are more in P PTC windshield consulting. Uh, so <clears throat> our name was formerly uh, Boundary System. In 2018, PDS Vision Group acquired Boundary Systems. And <clears throat> since then, uh, we are called as PDS Vision. Uh, we are first PTC global reseller and preferred services provider. Uh, we also develop software solutions for design and manufacturing. <clears throat> uh, our capabilities include consulting, implementation services, professional training, cloud, and help desk. And in the picture uh, of, of the map, you can see our existence in different uh, places in the world. Uh, including North America, India, South Africa, UAE, and <clears throat> so and countries in Europe. <clears throat> These are uh, our partners. Uh, PTC being the major one. We also have, <clears throat> sorry, partnered with other companies which provide solutions for um, provide solutions to support the PTC products such as Itraj or Moldex 3D, um, Key Keyshot. Um, and so on. Um, uh, what is digital thread? Uh, now, this is the concept uh, wherein we are trying to have a closed loop integration uh, right from the products as design phase uh, to its as maintained uh, uh, phase. Um, it is a single source of um, uh, uh, information. Uh, it starts from right, <clears throat> starts right from the product planning design, continues through its um, uh, business processes, production planning, uh, uh, actual production execution, and in the end, also taking care of its maintenance services, delivery, and other operations. Uh, as you can see in digital thread, we have four layers. Uh, the innermost being the product uh, virtualization in which we have uh, <clears throat> we have our digital data, basically the CAD, the documents, CAD management, um, um, technical uh, requirements management. Uh, and on top of it, which we have business processes which are managing this data, um, <clears throat> the, which could include bomb management. We can have uh, project management, change management, uh, quality management. And once this is done, uh, the other, uh, the outer, uh, the third outer circle uh, involves um, uh, digital manufacturing, integ ERP integration, uh, design for uh, manufacturing and supply chain uh, uh, processes and so on. So these are the process which will be 
um, taking care of uh, the third, um, the process level uh, data and using it for their operations. And in the end, we have our connected solutions, uh, uh, which uh, could be an example of IoT, smart applications, uh, or augmented reality. <clears throat> now let's go to our main topic today. Our topic today is integration between windchill and ERP systems. Uh, we will be uh, looking at three main um, uh, com components today. Uh, starting with why do we integrate windchill with ERP and then the next will be how <clears throat> will be the approach uh, for the integration between windchill and ERP system and the third one will be what are the options available especially the technology options available to do that. So let's start with the first one. Now <clears throat> why do we integrate windchill and ERP? Uh, as we all know, uh, the current uh, manufacturing uh, companies are always under pressure to have shorter time to market. Um, uh, uh, they want to reach uh, faster and have a, a shorter development cycles and at the same time need to manage uh, the product uh, variability and its complexity uh, in a globalized uh, environment where we have um, uh, teams sitting across uh, ev every corner of the world uh, and we can also we need to also manage and operate in this globalized supply chain and at the same time have an improved and uh, efficient improved operational efficiency uh, and keeping in mind that we need to meet uh, the cost targets so <clears throat> what could be the challenges uh, what could be the challenges that we would go through if you don't have uh, our ERP and PLM um, connected uh, to achieve these market pressures. So <clears throat> since we don't have these two systems connected with each other, uh, the data from PLM cannot be always uh, uh, or at runtime or at a very faster uh, way. It cannot be synced with ERP system since we have a lot of manual processes happening. So at every point of the time, we cannot make sure that we have accurate data uh, available at the ERP systems. Um, uh, at the same time, we also do not have, uh, a, we also find it difficult um, to reuse uh, the manufacturing processes and resources uh, from the PL by the PLM team uh, well in advance. Um, again, we have, the, uh, because of the disconnected uh, systems and manual processes, uh, we are struggling to provide accurate data. That means if we have uh, changes happening in the PLM side, uh, the ERP system should know it uh, at the same time. So that's why uh, it's difficult because of the manual process, it's difficult to have the change, uh, the updated data available to the ERP uh, system um, at a very earlier phase. So all these things may result in, in, in inefficiencies and higher costs. Uh, it can have scraps and rework, um, delays and errors in, uh, uh, the, uh, in the production of the uh, product. Um, now, how should companies address these challenges? Uh, we can integrate PLM with ERP systems. So that means integrating our upstream and the downstream processes and data um, taking place, uh, all the operations between the PLM and ERP, um, uh, which, which are uh, playing a role in managing a particular product. So <clears throat> let's see uh, what are the advantages of having this integration between the two systems. Uh, the picture shows us, gives us an idea of an overlap of the processes and the data between these two systems. You can see, um, the we can have the requirements uh, uh, management or the quality or the manufacturing process management have the ERP data uh, have the ERP uh, data or processes being overlapped uh, which will benefit the design team to know what resources are already available or what resources would the ERP system would make available well in advance and at the same time we can also have uh, 
for example, the sourcing data uh, available in the PRP, PLM uh, team, PLM side. So uh, these way we can have an overlap of the processes on both the systems, uh, which will optimize our uh, product data. Now, what are the benefits of integrating PLM and ERP system? So studies have shown that uh, the best in class companies uh, are more likely uh, are 40 percent more likely to have integrated uh, the PLM and ERP system. And it is also more common to have the PLM and ERP system to be uh, the most preferred one out of all the integrations. So the PLM system, such as an ex such as a venture system, can integrate with not just ERP but other sort of uh, systems also. But uh, the studies show that um, PLM is more likely and most commonly being integrated uh, and preferred. Uh, and the preferred system integration is with the ERP integration. <clears throat> so, what are the benefits of having PLM and ERP connection um, these are some of the benefits so we can have higher quality reduced cost shorter time to market <clears throat> higher quality because uh, the design decision making is improved and we can reduce errors in the bomb information uh, reduced cost is because we can avoid rework or scrap and can always have up-to-date data available in the ERP system um, we can there is there will also be reduction in inventory cost uh, through improved uh, the reuse um, we can also reduce the cost of creating and maintaining custom integrated software by 50 percent or more so uh, if, if if we have a uh, now this is where we can have a uh, software solution in place which could be a um, already uh, implemented business logic being bought by a manufacturing system and used such as a winching ESI. So since if we have that, we can also reduce the customization cost and update, updation and maintenance. Now, uh, and all these things eventually will help us uh, to have shorter time to market. Um, up to 40% of reduction in cycle time, uh, cycle time by reducing the number of data errors here. So there are many benefits uh, of having the PLM in ERP connection. Uh, as you can see, uh, this slides give us an overview of how the PLM and ERP systems have evolved over a period of time. Uh, on the left hand side, it is showing our uh, old uh, ERP system where the focus was mainly on manufacturing optimization uh, due to which uh, ERP is eventually integrated with is is integrated or um, work majorly with CRM, SCM, manufacturing and PLM as a system. But then over a period of time, PLM um, was evolved in such a way that it it was necessary to have a different system as a whole for its own operations which involved uh, manufacturing supply chain quality um, digital data management and hence today we have two different uh, systems which is plm and erp they have their own um, operations and they serve uh, and they are both complementary for a product uh, uh, for a particular products uh, life cycle so now even now that we can see on the right hand side the focus is more on product innovation and excellence <clears throat> so as i said both of these systems are co have complementary product information and management uh, you can see plm is basically uh, taking care of the intellectual assets it is taking care of the bomb management um, e bomb, M bomb, service bomb management, quality and uh, quality planning, compliance, and other uh, related information. <clears throat> and on the other side, ERP system is a taking care of the physical assets, 
uh, wherein it is uh, taking care of the actual material handling, uh, the production planning, product execution, quality inspection, and other such related activities. <clears throat> so basically, it is more focused on production life cycle. However, PLM is more focused on definition uh, life cycle. Now, what is the impact on production? cost uh, one of the most important factor here uh, if we have these two systems integrated uh, we can reduce the cost uh, the production cost in a much better way <clears throat> because when we are making decisions in the intellectual assets phase that means if we are making the decision in the design phase itself it can impact up to 80 percent of the production cost as compared to the decisions made at the uh, ERP side, which is which can reduce only around 20% of the production cost. So the more uh, uh, the more decision, if, if the decision is made in a very much later phase of a product's uh, life cycle, uh, the cost increases automatically. So it's always good to have integration between these two systems, which can eventually help us identify error um, and it can eventually reduce the cost. Now, it's just an example. For example, if we have a cost uh, to change a particular product is X dollars in a PLM phase, the same cost uh, could go up to 100 times or 1000 times if we come to know about an error at the end of the product's uh, Now, now that we have seen uh, why we should integrate PLM and ERP system, what are the advantages, how we can optimize the process and data between the, these two systems, we will now need to see how do we approach the integration between uh, these two systems. Um, there will be different points that we will going through. We will be go through, going through uh, on deciding how we integrate these two systems. So let's go to them uh, one by one. Now, these are the best practices uh, to integrate. The first one being uh, system identification. Now, uh, what is the first phase uh, mean? So we have to first identify what are the system we are going to integrate, whether it is PLM, ERP, or anything else. So, or if we have multiple ERP systems there. Uh, so this is a phase where you uh, finalize your systems uh, to be integrated. The next phase is now that you finalize your system, you need to know when do you want to trigger uh, the uh, publishing. For example, when is the time that you want your ERP system to know that there is some product coming inside the system or there is some change coming for that product. So these are the different trigger events that business can decide um, and depending on which uh, the integration can take place. So you can say that I want to integrate, I want to make sure that whenever a bill of material is in a preliminary stage, uh, we can trigger uh, an integration and make sure that the preliminary bomb is inside the ERP system. So maybe the ERP system at this moment will come to know uh, what will be the resources that they need to be prepared well in advance. So this is a preliminary stage. But uh, in some cases, uh, for example, the most recommended or the most standard approach people follow is that we can have the trigger point when a particular bill of material is released. So that will be the trigger events when we will be <coughs> driving the exchange between the data. <coughs> now, uh, between the system, exchange of data between the system. So these, these are the trigger points. Now, the third one is identifying the data elements uh, uh, while exchanging. Now, what does data element means? Data elements are the objects uh, relationships, its attributes, um, which we will be considering when um, sending the data. Say, for example, a business today decides that we just need to send the bill of material, not the CAD document. Uh, we all only need to send only the WT part. So this is the decision making uh, where um, you uh, decide on having uh, what windchill objects you are trying to integrate with the ERP system. It could be change. Uh, it could be change notice also. Uh, it could be uh, WT part data. It could be documents uh, data and so on. 
Now, once you know what kind of objects you are going to um, uh, send, the fourth step is <clears throat> you have to create mapping between these two objects. Now, what is mapping? Uh, mapping is where an object from PLM side will be mapped to another object from ERP side. So a part from windshield side will be mapped to a part from ERP system. Now in ERP system, maybe they don't call it part, maybe they call it an item or item master. So this is where the mapping happens. We decide that yes, our part will override the changes for that particular ER, uh, for that particular item master in ERP system. So this, is, this is the mapping and eventually each and every attribute of these two objects will be mapped. And the last thing is persisting the data. That means once we have decided all these, uh, the last thing is where we send the data from windshield side and persist or save in simple ways. We save it in the ERP system or update it in the ERP system. So this is the uh, these are the five stages of um, uh, five uh, stages of the best practices. <clears throat> Yeah, this is uh, this is the picture showing us an idea of what an integration solution. Now, this integration solution could be of different types. We will be discussing that in uh, in the later uh, slides. But this gives us an idea of how an integration solution can integrate what all different types of objects from PLM with ERP system. You can see change notice is integrating with change uh, is being mapped with change master part is being mapped with. Um, the uh, material uh, master over there and so on. This is just uh, giving a data flow idea. Now, once we have decided on that, uh, we need to know that who is the master here uh, when it comes to sending a particular attribute. Say, um, there are some, um, when, when I say attribute, it means uh, what parameter of a particular object is being mastered in which system. For example, for part, which is an object, its part number, which is a parameter, is being mastered in PLM side. So the source of information for part, part number of a particular part will always be Winchill and it will be unique from Winchill. And that is why we would like to make sure that every time an integration happens, the number should always be overridden in the uh, or uh, yeah overridden in the ERP side from PLM side only because PLM owns that particular attribute so this is that's that was uh, that is what says that it is being PLM mastered so out of many shared attributes some of the attributes could be PLM master and some of the attributes could be ERP master so this is the phase where we decide on that so that we do not override or the syncing of the data is in a standard way. <clears throat> now, uh, now that we have seen uh, the stages or the planning stages where how uh, we are, where we decide that how we will be integrating PLM with ERP. The third um, component here today we will be discussing is um, windchill and ERP integration options. So let's see what are the technology options available for Winchill. If uh, now the first one over here is uh, Java. So whenever we are integrating Winchill with any kind of system, not just any ERP system, any kind of system, Java um, coding or customization can be used to achieve that. Um, since we all know that Winchill is based on Java application, uh, we can make use of uh, the knowledge of this Winchill Java APIs uh, to achieve an integration with any kind of system. Um, the next level of integration will be web services. Now, web services <coughs> make use of now uh, Info Engine um, and also. Sorry, I'm sorry. Web services can make use of Info Engine or ESI Open API. Now, what are Info Engine? What is Info Engine? Info Engine is embedded in the method server and it helps Info Engine it helps us 
uh, to extract windshield data uh, and also manipulate or modify it. Uh, so web services are usually customizations making use of this info engine to update, read, modify data from windshield to any other ERP system. And at the same time, we can make use of ESI Open API. Uh, now this ESI Open API uh, integrates windshield PDM link data with the TIPCO middleware. Now TIPCO middleware is another um, option available in windshield ESI, which we will be discussing again in the future slides. So this is the web services is the second option. It is loosely coupled integration. It lowers and results in lower overall cost. Um, and the features allow integration to be developed at higher level of abstraction, though it is customization, but it's higher level of abstraction as compared to the Java APIs. And the third uh, most recommended uh, um, approach could be uh, pre-build out of the box integrations, which are the ERP uh, connector and windshield ESI. Now, when I say ERP connector and windshield ESI, usually they both of them uh, are, are two parts of the same windshield module. So the windshield module that gives us ERP connector and ESI uh, functionality is windshield ESI module, which is windshield enterprise systems integration module. Um, and this ERP connector is part of that module. And, and at the uh, last layer, you can see e ESI module, e e ESI layer, it sits on top of uh, all the layers below it. So what are these uh, pre-build out of the box integration options, right? So these are, um, I would say uh, already uh, created customized uh, pre-built business logic or framework uh, provided by Winchill, uh, provided by PTC for uh, on top of Winchill uh, PDM link. And we can only install and make use of these modules rather than customizing uh, Winchill and putting more efforts uh, in maintenance of it. So. It, depending on their cost, whether it's ERP connector or Winchill ESI, they are more um, easier to maintain and they are highly flexible GUI development environments. Uh, and um, you can still make customizations on them, but the OOTB framework itself comes up with predefined um, um, predefined framework which can extract the data from Winchill and help us to make this uh, integrate to ERP system. Uh, we will talk more in detail on them. Let's go ahead and see one by one. <clears throat> now, layers of integration, as I said, the first one was Java API. Uh, Java API is basically making use of uh, Winchill uh, APIs and connecting, uh, making use of these, you can connect to any sort of other uh, software and um, connect Winchill, uh, integrate Winchill with that software. So it is full, extremely fine-grained access to Winchill, but this is approach is highly, uh, is, is strongly um, discouraged by PTC because it's very tightly coupled and hence we have greater maintenance cost of it. It could be extremely flexible if you have uh, extensible knowledge of Winchill, Winchill APIs. Uh, it could be highly flexible to implement if you have that knowledge, but it's also um, the cost, but it also could be time consuming. And uh, since it is tighter coupling, so with every upgrades and maintenance, you have to make sure that the functionalities uh, work fine with that. So that is, and, and it always requires high level of uh, application API knowledge. Um, and basically it is a point-to-point -point integration. Um, and additional integrations requires to, uh, requires to start from scratch on this. So this is, this is the, uh, the base layer of Winchill. Let's go to the layer on top of it. Now, Info Engine. Info Engine is built into the Winchill uh, Info Engine server is built into the Winchill server itself. So it is running in the Winchill method server and it is making use of Winchill ESI services. Uh, and that is why it will give you capability to extract data from Winchill and uh, manipulate and send it to other ERP system. 
Now these other ERP system could be uh, a TIPCO, which which is uh, which connects with SAP and Oracle ERP system, and uh, at the same time it could be any other ERP system also. So uh, usually this would require uh, a customization around it. <clears throat> so this is uh, the features are feature include built into the Winchill server. Um, it's a standards based integration and is, it can provide synchronous and asynchronous communication. Um, the benefits are that it's loosely coupled integration. So it's, it's, um, it has a lower overall cost um, and it's uh, highly flexible, allows the integration of any kind of system because it's not, um, it, it can not just connect with the TIPCO uh, recommended SAP and Oracle integration, but any other sort of ERP system where the uh, manufacturing company may have um, less number of users. Uh, but the shortcomings over would be, again, developing integrations could be costly and time consuming because since it is sitting on top of the um, Java, yes, it has, as compared to Java API, it has less customization, but it still has um it is still time consuming uh, over here and that's why the update and maintenance again comes up with a higher cost let's go to the next level now those were the first two options java api and info engine which usually requires customization but um on top of it, what Winchill provides us is the Winchill ESI module, Winchill Enterprise Systems Integration module, uh, which gives us capability of having ERP connector. Um, now this ERP connector is part of Winchill ESI module and uh, it's a pre-configured business logic. So we don't have to do much of customization around it. It is a unidirectional uh, integration and it gives us a export of uh, windshield data at a particular trigger event. And that export is in the form of XML file. I will be showing you this approach in the demo. And uh, this ERP connector comes, uh, this ERP connector helps us to also have a uh, maintain history inside the system um, as to which kind of revision is currently released. Whenever we have updates to a particular uh, product with later uh, latest revisions, uh, the history for each and every release uh, of each and every uh, revision will also be maintained in the system. So definitely there is release tracking. The benefits are automated or on-demand release. So it's, it can be on-demand and automated um and traceability as i said there is a history of every release and it's easy the implementing is easy the installation is easy and utilization is also quite flexible um uh, convenient and it uh, however only the shortcomings are that it does not have a direct integration to any other system so it just gives you an export of um, export to uh, XML. That means it just gives us an XML file every time it is generated. And this file needs to be um, uh, imported or maybe customized or whichever way uh, ERP system would like to use it, they can use it. Uh, but it does not have a, a, a direct end-to-end uh, -end connection to other ERP system. So it basically just gives us an export of the data. So if you want to have a closed loop connection, such as a success message or anything, you know, closed loop integration, you still need customization on top of it. And it does not support uh, loading and processing data on the target system. As I said, it, it, it exports the data in XML format. You don't have any um, uh, anything after that. ERP connector stops over there. So it is your responsibility to use that XML file and um, use it uh, by the technical experts from the ERP system. <clears throat> Let's go to the last uh, uh, layer of integration. That means the windshield ESI. Now, when I was talking about ERP connector, ERP connector comes in the windshield ESI module itself. Only thing is that it gives us the export of uh, the data to the XML file. Now, this windshield ESI makes use of this XML file 
and directly integrates um, to um, uh, to SAP or Oracle. So the windchill ESI basically comes with two options. Either it is ERP connector or the second one is the TIPCO uh, adapter. Um, this is again uh, uh, pre-built integration to SAP or Oracle. Uh, it's highly flexible GUI development uh, environment. Um, and uh, the but only thing is that the cost of these ESI licenses are very high, even high as compared to ERP connector. So it becomes um, uh, not that um, uh, reasonable. Uh, it becomes uh, not that reasonable for uh, manufacturing companies where the number of users is less. Um, that is why uh, they would mostly go with the ERP connector in this case. Uh, now, this ERP uh, ESI uh, uh, integration makes use of the TIPCO middleware. Uh, we also need another software to maintain this kind of integration, which is called as the TIPCO middleware. So, and but the important thing is that there is a closed loop transaction, unlike ERP connector here. Um, <clears throat> now, these one by one, we just saw one by one what are the different layers of integration that we can consider when integrating windshield with any ERP system. Um, this uh, is, say, for example, a windshield database. Uh, firstly, we, we saw that we can make use of Java API on top of it. If you don't want to go with this, we saw that we can make use of windshield info engine uh, and windshield ESI open API to have custom web services. If you still don't want to go with those custom uh, services, you can in the end, make use of the pre-built um, windchill module, uh, which is ERP connector or windchill ESI. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, now go to a demo of how windchill ERP connector works. Um, I'm going to connect to my... So, <clears throat> this is uh, my uh, system where I have a module. Now, I will be showing you a demo of how uh, Winchill ERP um, connector uh, can help us get an extract of the data from Winchill to an XML file. Okay, so to start with, I have a CAD model. Uh, let us go to its uh, WT, uh, it, its its part structure. Now, usually when we want to send data to ERP system, we usually make use of the EBOM or the MBOM, correct? Right? So I'm going to go to its equivalent EBOM here. Let us open the part structure. Um, I have this part uh, model 2.asm. It was a, let me refresh this. It's a shaft model. And I'm going to just refresh this. So it's a multi level bomb, not a very huge one. And you can see uh, model two is the parent node, and there are there is one sub assembly which says model, and all other components. Now let's see how how will this look in our XML file when we try to send this to uh, the ERP system. When I say try to send this to ERP system, we are just publishing it inside Winch. We are just sending an XML export inside Winchill server itself. It is not yet being directly connected to any ERP system. Uh, when you are using the OOTB ERP connector, okay? Um, <clears throat> before going ahead, there are uh, three different trigger options to send the, uh, send the data. Now, whenever we are trying to integrate, that means whenever we are trying to send data from windshield to ERP, we have to think of what all options we have available, right? So ERP connector gives us three different options available. So one of them is set state, second one is manual, and the third one is uh, through the change notice. So what does this mean? So when I say set state, that means whenever this particular bomb and all these objects go in release state, uh, the integration, uh, the publication will be triggered uh, at the at that time, so that is called a set state. So, for example, if I go in actions and do set state, now this is this is a manual set set state, but of course in uh, real time scenarios, a set state can happen through change notice or promotion, right? So, whenever that set state happens to 
released state. Uh, for example, if I do set state and say release, then at that same time, uh, the integration will be triggered. Now, this is the first option. Second option is uh, manual. When I say manual, it means that there is an option on a parts action uh, 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 action button over here, which says it is sent to distribution target. You see this option here, which means sent to distribution target. Now, distribution target over here is our ERP system. In terms of wind chill, an ERP system is called as distribution target. So that is why the action over here it says send to distribution target. So if I want to manually send this particular form to ERP system, I will use send to distribution target action. So when I click on this action, I have I can see to which ERP system that means distribution target it is going. I have given just a name as PDS plant one. This is just a test name and you can have a unique identification number for that. And if I click next, I will come to know what all different um, objects are going in this release, right? So it will give me an idea that all my paths will be sent from that particular bomb and all its CAD data is also going, right? And their relationship, such as which is the assembly part, which is the bomb component. So we know that model two is the base assembly, uh, the, the top node of our assembly and then we also have another sub assembly which is model right and then these are all the components inside them so this is a, this gives us an idea of um, what sort of data will be published and he in the actions it will say create so it is saying create because we are doing it for the first time for this form if it was an update if it would have a different uh, action name here so Let's cancel this. This is the manual action. I'm going to show this manual action later on. Uh, first, I will go to the, uh, I'm, I'm going to go through the third option now, which is the change notice. So I'm going to cancel this. And let's create a change notice on this, which is the third trigger action, trigger uh, event. Let's go to new, new change notice. Um, and I'm just going to keep, Keep it fast track. And let's collect all the entire bomb here. I'm going to copy this from here and paste it in the resulting objects. Let us collect resulting objects here. Now we can collect all the dependence for that bomb and it is necessary. Uh, because if you're trying to send a assembly, you have to make sure that everything below that assembly is also going along with it, or it has always al also been already released. So you see there is one of the component which is already released. So it's okay if I don't select that, but this is a test data. So there was something which is already released. You see that so you don't need to collect that, but something which is not yet released, you make sure that you collect everything in that bill of material. So let's collect that. And you can also collect CAD models for each and every them. So if you see the CAD model for this uh, clip is also being coming along with that um, uh, component and so on. So the entire CAD assembly along with the part assembly is being selected now. So let's select them all. I'm going to remove this release one here. Now you see that we have, sorry, we have selected everything that we need to release. So let's select on finish, next, finish. I'm going to uh, complete, let me go to the change notice here. I'm going to complete uh, the process for this change notice. You see the all the objects that I've uh, selected are over here. Uh, before going ahead, I would like to show you how that assembly first look like before releasing it. So whenever a, a part is being released to the ERP connector, you always have a history. As I said, we always have a history maintained uh, inside. So if I go to the related objects table here and in the end of it, 
you will see that this is distribution target table. So this table means that uh, to which ERP system this object is going to be released and whether it is currently released or not. So there is no status right now because we have not yet completed our change notice. I'm going to go back to my change notice now. This is right. I'm going to let me go to the change notice now and release it. So. <clears throat> yeah, so. Let's quickly complete all the tasks here. So when we say releasing objects through change notice, we make sure that we resolve this change notice. Complete. And then I think we have the last task remaining before release. So this is the task before release, the audit one. I'm going to quickly complete that. Now, once I release, once I complete this, the trigger will happen. So I'm going to complete this now. Okay, this is now completed and let's go to our bomb here. I'm going to go to my bomb. Go to its related objects. I'm going to refresh this. You see there is, we have a status now which says pending. So that means in the back end, uh, the publishing is going on. That means the processing is happening wherein one by one, each and every component along with the CAD component and all their relationship is being processed and exported to an XML file. So right now, I think it is now released. Everything is released here. Yeah, when you see succeeded at the top of it, that means everything below is succeeded. Um, I think the process has completed. When you see uh, that it is completed, you will also get an idea of what kind of object. I want to get that. Yeah, this is the description table here, this one. So this will show you that it sent model two as an assembly. Model does the sub assembly also went as an assembly part. And it is also showing a list of all the CAD documents. That means the related CAD documents are also released. Um, this is the relationship between the CAD and its part. So we also have that information. I will show you that information, the XML file properly, but this is through UI. I mean, when we are looking at the UI, the business admin can have a look at how the data was sent. So this UI gives you an idea of how the data was sent and also the parts were sent one by one. And you see over here, the change notice information that is 00054 number, this change notice information was also sent. Uh, so it will show that all these were released under this change notice number. I'm going to open that XML file now. This XML file is being exported on our Winchell server in um, where the Winchell server is installed. In this case, I'm going to the logs this is the this is my winchill uh, installed uh, directory and if i go to the logs in the end there will be a folder which says esi cache so esi cache this can be enabled using a preference so this gives us an idea of what was published what was extracted right now so up till this point this is the function of erp connector erp connector uh, that is the module that we were discussing. And after this, you must have seen that up till now, I don't have any connection with the system. Uh, this XML file, if I open it, let me see the timestamp. Yeah, this is the current timestamp. Now let's open this XML file. Uh, this, is the, this file gives us an idea of all the objects that were extracted. Um, it starts with the transaction ID. Now this is the transaction ID, um, which comes, which can be seen here, this one, 201. Yeah, this is what the business admin can see. So you can see the transaction ID here and under this transaction, you will see the ECN header. That means you can see the change notice number over here under which this was sent. Uh, and 
along with that, it will give you different tags and every tag has its own meaning. Say for example, for paths, you have added part, deleted part, unchanged part, changed part. In our case right now, we added these parts because they are new, they are A.1 new, right? So that is why they all will come under this added part tags. So this is how these tags help uh, the technical people to understand or, or read this file and see that, okay, this part number, um, female underscore part was added as a new, as A.1 released today. If there was a change to this part, it would come under uh, changed, uh, I think changed part is below here. So these are all coming added parts, but yeah, depending on whether they were added or deleted or changed, you will have that information here. So these are all the, you can see model, this came as part first, but since it is an assembly, it also will come as an assembly tag under the assembly tag. Now we just finished the part information. This is the document information you see for EPM documents. That means for the CAD documents, that is the CAD model of each and every part. Since we have added those in the change notice, they were also released. And because they were released, they are also listed in this XML format file. You can see they are all li listed under added documents here. One by one. Yeah. This is part one dot PRT released. It goes you A dot one and you can have your custom attributes also in it. So these are documents and you saw the part list, you saw the document list, but you don't know which part is related to which document, right? Because I have no access to Winchin at this point. I am a person from ERP side. I am looking at this file. I don't have access to Winchin, but I want to see this table 111.prt. Is it linked to which, it is linked to which part in Winchin? So that information can also be seen using this added document link. So each and every information, its relationship, everything is maintained in this XML file. If I search for this part, you see the document link. It comes under the document link tab and it will tell you that this part, table triple one dot part is linked to the associated objects. This is the part number to which they, this is the part number to which it is associated. In, in this case, the number are same, so it may be confusing, but it just gives you which part is linked to which document. And similarly, we can have links between uh, WD, uh, links between um, not the CAD, the do novel documents, the describer documents, reference document also. <clears throat> and this tag is for bomb header. Um, for a bomb header, when I say that my model two is the parent, the top node, it gives us an idea it comes under this bomb header node. So this means that model two is a bomb in this case. And what are the components for this model two? You will see them below here. So bomb component gives you uh, information of which part is under which. So it will give you, these two tags will help you identify. For this assembly, this is the part number. For model, this is the part number. For model again, we have another part one. So Basically, if I go back to my model to not confuse you more, eh, it will give you this relationship. Part one is under model, part two is under model. So that's the relationship I'm talking here. Bomb component and bomb header. So basically, it gives you the information of what was being sent in that change notice. Now, um, this is an example of uh, first release, but again, you can revise. If tomorrow I want to uh, revise this form and send the updated changes, um, I can always come over here, say revise. Um, I'm going to revise this, okay. And say that I'm going to remove one of the component here. So let's quickly remove this. So I just removed it. I'm going to check in. And now if I try to publish, uh, this is the second option, send to distribution target. You will see that what was removed out of that assembly. So in the actions, you can see there is none. None means there is no change. 
to all the other relationship but there was some change that we do right that we did so we deleted one bomb component which is stand right so that is what information will still again we send if i try to send this bomb again with uh, change notice and you will see the same information here in this format so that gives you the delta change um a delta coming up uh, for every release uh, it's again showing that for model 2 i deleted this bomb component so that's basically a change um history and and this change history can again be seen here once i send it you will again have a succeeded information now before ending this um, i i know we are almost time i just wanted to show two main important things uh, this was part of uh, triggering uh, the xml uh, triggering uh, the erp integration but uh, i want to show the monitoring of it so let's go to site utilities the same uh, monitoring can be done at um, uh, business by the by a business admin which will be under just a minute where it is uh, yes i uh, yeah this one it's called as enterprise system transaction administration so inside that what all objects were released this week you can go and always search over here which were successfully released maybe this give succeeded transaction created on i'm just going to give today so what all i sent today you can always come and monitor but you can do it for weekly or monthly or anything so it gives you an idea for monitoring here okay. you can see all the objects that we just sent and these are the test date this is the test data i did before the webinar this is our current um yeah publication status here and this is part of monitoring uh the most important thing is configuring um uh, distribution targets it is it is done in this option manage distribution so if you go to manage distribution you see there are three distribution targets that have uh, created you can just come over here create now if you if today as a company you say that i want to create a erp system over here say um, a plant in north america so you can come over here new distribution target um any plant over there so for example you give a number 0001 here name as there is a plant over here in this place so you give it as cleveland and give description and make it active and uh, give different information the path over here gives you the path where the uh, xml file uh, will be uh, export i'm i'm just going to cancel this and show you what i've already created so this is how i've created all these and let me show you what all information we maintain here so yes this is this is the path where our xml export uh, that means these files will be generated and then if i go next these are the settings we you can make use of um while exporting the data say for example if you want to publish alternate part for a part it's a yes or no option this gives us gives us um uh, settings where the related objects to a part or a document whether you want to send them or not and many other information related to bomb settings and change notice so this can be all maintained here say publish alternate for bomb publishing a bomb i said yes um we have selected where is the document yeah publish related document while publishing a bomb right i have selected this as yes and that is why i we got the document information in our xml file so like this you can toggle on and off um different information and these are different um Uh, parameters that we have to maintain this path over here is the template um there is a template for this xml file so that template is maintained is given by winchill otb and we give the path of that and this is the info engine task so these are all technical information this is how we maintain a distribution target and to which we send the data yeah this is the end of um, our 
demo for integration, a windchill to ERP integration using only ERP connector. Please note that we just made use of ERP connector today. So please let me know if you have any questions with that. Um, I'm going to go through, you can type in your questions. I will go through them one by one. Okay, we have a question from Wayne. Um, he's saying that, can you export the pro program data as well? I'm sorry, Wayne, I did not understand. Export the pro program data as in, are you talking about? Can you please elaborate on that? Uh, meanwhile, I'll go to Srinivasan. How the order will be maintained when publishing to ERP? How the order will be maintained? Are you talking about, uh, if you're talking about the release history, then we always have a history of which, um, yeah, thanks for confirming. Um, we always have a history of uh, which revision that we are looking at. So let me go back to this uh, demo. I'll explain you that over there. So when I said that we changed, um, in this example, I showed you that how we created, right? So that is why everything went in, um, added, added component, added bomb component, added data. So if you tomorrow change it, if you revise it from A to B, and then you change it, that means you changed it, right? and you want to make sure that it will be maintained in the XML format also. So for that, let me just quickly do that for you. I have revised it to B.2 and I'm going to just send it now using our manual push this time. So I select send to ERP distribution target. And if I click next, this is the action that I was saying, telling, right? So in this case, you will come to know that this is changed. Uh, we removed one form component, right? And if I send this, let me generate the XML file. You see publication started here. And I will wait the XML file, wait till the XML file is being generated. I'll just refresh this. Yeah, okay, now this is succeeded. Let's just go to the... System will automatically know which file needs to be processed. In a bomb, usually, the since this is, as I told you, it is a pre-built uh, module. It has its own business logic framework. It makes sure that each and every, it goes bottom to top. Each and every bomb component is first processed, and then it's uh, sub-assemblies, and then the top node. Um, and for this question, I'm going to open the latest file and show you that now, you see the system will tell you that it is a changed part. And you will see that model two is now changed and rest of the other parts are again still coming unchanged because there's nothing. And I will also show you the deleted component here. Let me go back. Oh, you got it, thanks. Uh, I'll just show you that. This is a changed bomb. It is again now coming under changed bomb. It was earlier coming in the added bomb. And you will also have a deleted bomb component because we deleted the stand. So it is coming under deleted bomb component stand. Okay, so this is how the change can be maintained. Thanks uh, Srinivasan for asking. Thanks that you understand that. Uh, okay, Wayne has explained it more. This is the data that is used within CAD to make your CAD data more flexible. That is ability to turn features on and off based on various input parameters. Uh, I think Wayne is asking more on the CAD side, whether we can send CAD data. This is the data that is used within CAD to. Okay, 
uh, <coughs> where if you are asking about exporting CAD related data, so in here I'm just typing the answer. Uh, we can export the CAD models as I shown as I showed you in the examples earlier. Let me open. You see, it came in as a document here. Our CAD came in as a document here, and it's related uh, parameters and attributes also. You can also have custom attributes here for your CAD data. So if you're asking me question about exporting the CAD related information, this is what um, ERP connector can give you. Yeah, we don't have any more questions now. Uh, thank you for joining uh, this uh, session. Um, I hope it was informative. If you still have any more questions related to ERP integration or any other module related to Windchill or Creo, um, or any re related products from PTC, uh, you can always connect uh, with us. Uh, our website is pdsvision.us. Um, you can also check our um, other related uh, webinar uh, topics on our YouTube channel. And for any other licensing or any other related questions, you can always reach out to our sales team. Uh, that is the email ID for our sales team, which is sales at PDS Vision. So thank you everyone for joining this. Um, have a nice day. Bye.